morning everybody hope you're all doing well Luna and I are doing great she's down here beside me chilling out we're out having a morning walk look at that beautiful sky it's a lovely day today beautiful clouds up there I love those big fluffy clouds they're gorgeous still a wee bit of a cold cold uh, wind but um, we're getting there and uh, the weather is definitely on the up, which is nice. So, um, <clears throat> take you on a wee walk with me. We'll have a wee chat. It's quite busy in here this morning. Um, everybody's out enjoying the, night, the nice weather. Sometimes in this park, I think I'd said in other videos that um, it's very popular in the morning because there's a lovely cafe here. It's really, really nice. A lot of people go to get a breakfast and a coffee. So sometimes it's not the easiest place to find a wee quiet spot. <clears throat> but uh, we'll do our best. Um, so we will. But I hope everybody's doing well. We're doing great. Enjoying this lovely weather we're getting here in the UK. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, self-sabotage. And uh, how you can... How you can recognise it in yourself and how you can start to heal it. And move past it. So if you... Um, come on baby! If you um, get negative thoughts about yourself, could be things like, you know, feeling shame or guilt or, um, and even some extreme cases, I've heard people, you know, say that they hate themselves, which is incredibly sad. I have a lot of compassion for people who are in those situations. But all hope is not lost. As uh, the fantastic performer, the legend that was Prince says, I'm here to tell you there's something else. So, um, oh, the sun's coming out now, that's absolutely gorgeous. So when we cling to negative thoughts, about ourselves, what happens is it separates us from our true selves and it causes pain, it causes suffering every time you come away from the person that you are, your true authentic self. You're cutting yourself off from your own being. And this is the root of suffering and pain. The more you come away from who you are as an individual, the more you're gonna cause pain and suffering to yourself. Give you a wee look at Luna there. Now, if you've suffered from addictions, self-sabotaging, guilt, shame, any of these sorts of things, What tends to happen is, you know, you might take a drink, you might binge eat, you might um, go into toxic relationships, you might be a martyr to people, you might mother people, all these sort of um, codependency type things that we all do. There's no blame, there's no shame here. Everyone's experienced this at some point in their life. It's how we learn, it's how we grow. But it's if we get stuck in these things, is where it's going to damage us. It's going to cause us pain. It's going to cause us suffering. And some people who spend a long time in these patterns. But when we go into these patterns, and maybe you take that drink, or you take that drug, or you take that extra bit of cake, or whatever, it's a way to try and stop the suffering for a little while. It's a way to get a temporary relief. 
But that relief is short lived. It's not real. What's happening is you're trying to find a solution to a problem. And what happens is when we come back out of that temporary relief, what tends to happen, even if it's something like an obsession, obsessed with somebody or something, you come back and the feelings of guilt and shame and self-loathing comes back and you're back in the same place and the cycle goes on and around and around and around and each time it can get worse and worse and unfortunately, which is very sad, it can have incredibly harmful consequences to our lives and to other people that are in our lives. Now, what we want to do is try and work towards a more healthy, balanced way of, of getting to the solutions, healing those pains, healing those hurts. So if you start to become aware of the thoughts, start to become aware of the patterns, and how you can do that is when you get that urge to eat that cake or engage with that toxic individual, you become aware of what you're thinking and how that thought is reacting with you emotionally. Just investigate it. Look at it like you're looking in from the outside and you're thinking, okay, here's the thought. How is it affecting me and my body emotionally? And just start to stand back and become aware. And the more and more you become aware, the more likely that you can break or intervene in the pattern. Now, depending on how difficult your situation has been, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes we are afraid to face fears, afraid to face suffering and pain that has happened to us. But it's never as bad as what you think it's going to be. A lot of the time it's just fear of the unknown. And what you tend to find is, once you start working through these things, it's never as bad as what you thought it was going to be. So what you want to do is start to notice when you get that urge. See, when you get that urge to have a drink or that urge to have a cake or that urge to engage with like maybe a, a toxic person that you know is not good for you or whatever it is. Stop and think, what is going on in my mind and what is going on in my body? Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you might be able to break it at that exact time, but that's okay. Becoming aware of it is the first step, you know? And the more and more aware you become, the more likely then you will be able to start to break the pattern. And if you are doing this 20 times a day, 30 times a day, it doesn't matter. Start with breaking it once. Be gentle with yourself. And you could go somewhere like sit by a, a river or go out into nature, somewhere nice and quiet, take time for yourself and um, just sit with your thoughts in a nice safe place. But you mightn't be able to fully intervene or break it every time, but that's okay. It's not a race. It's about progressing and moving forward one step at a time. And each time you do it, you'll start to change that pattern. And over time, your brain will start to create a new pattern.
Now, depending on how strong you are, things have gone through. If you need to get support, there's plenty of support services out there. It's important to have support. And if you have people in your life, you know, around you that care about you and support them, tell them what you're doing so that they'll be supportive of you and that they'll help you when you get urges or you get negative, negative self-talk and you want to engage in sabotaging or addictive behaviours. Tell them so that they can also prompt you and help to remind you just to take that moment to become aware of what's happening. And start to become more accustomed to your thinking. Start to become more aware of your thoughts. Start to step back from your thoughts like an observer and observe what is going on in the mind and in the body. Now, other things that can help is like getting involved in creative projects, getting involved in organizations. All right, just let this plane go by. an airplane just going overhead there but it's important that you start to take space for yourself so that you can have that time to listen to your inner voice listen to your inner guidance and what you'll start to find is then you'll start to realize where that hurt is coming from where that pain is coming from and you'll start to link back then to maybe certain situations you've had in the past and then you'll begin to heal, heal those, um, those hurts and those pains and then you'll carry on in your journey and you'll heal more and more and you'll break the pattern more and more and then eventually you'll just break the cycle altogether. And you've got to be very gentle with yourself, compassionate with yourself and just take it one step at a time. Start from the smallest thing that you can do first so you don't get overwhelmed and then just build it up as time goes on. You can also practice mindfulness techniques. There's meditation. You know, there is a lot of groups out there that do mindfulness techniques with yoga and exercise. But um, in my experience, one of the best things is getting out into nature. Nature creates a natural rhythm to slow the mind and slow the body, and it's free. So over time, if you keep doing this, keep recognizing the thoughts, keep recognizing the patterns, you can also journal them down and um, have a look at them. Sometimes when you're out walking in nature, it's handy to take a wee notepad with you or a wee notebook and start to jot down things that are coming to your mind. And what will happen is you will just naturally start to come back to your authentic self. Doing this work will naturally bring you back to your inner being, to wholeness again. And don't worry about how long it's going to take. Don't worry about if you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. There is no right and wrong. The most important thing is that you start doing it. And you start to create a healthier, authentic version of yourself. Alright, so from me and my beautiful Luna, take care and have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you all soon.